So hi everyone, today we have a special guest on our channel. We have Vedant with us. So Vedant, would you like to introduce yourself once? Yeah, hi Ashish, hi everyone. My name is Vedant Vashish. I'm a 2024 grad from Thapar Institute of Engineering Technology in Patiala. And I've pursued a bachelor's of uh, engineering in electronics and communication. Previously, I used to work at Easy Diner, and now I've made a switch to Amazon where, where I'm working as a software development engineer. Yeah. Hmm. Right, right, right. So like he mentioned, he has recently cracked Amazon as SD1. So we'll be getting to know his journey to cracking Amazon, one of the fan companies, you know, how he started, his preparation, interview experience and everything in between. So Vedant, would you like to start us off with your interview experience? Like what was the process like? What all happened? Okay, uh, so the process started in December, uh, where I got to know that Amazon is hiring for their SD1 roles uh, for 2024 grads in particular. So it was a hiring uh, type which targeted uh, grads from my batch only. Uh, so uh, so uh, I applied on the uh, jobs portal without a referral and there were four rounds in total. The first one was the online coding assessment, which consisted of two coding questions and a work style assessment, which, is, uh, which I guess is uh, primarily exclusive to Amazon only. They take a work style assessment as well to evaluate on how you work how you would work uh, if you had a connection of various people. So that was the online assessment. After that, there were three rounds of interviews and the first two were purely based on uh, DSA skills and how you, uh, and your code, uh, coding basically, just to check if you uh, uh, take their functional requirements. And after that, there was a final round, which was a bar raiser or a hiring manager round, which, and uh, it, it mostly focuses on your leadership principles. So these were the three rounds. In the first round, there were I was asked a couple of uh, DSA questions. And in the second round as well, there were two DSA questions. Along with that, they would ask you some behavioral questions uh, to evaluate if you, uh, if you satisfy the leadership principles of Amazon. There's, there's around 16 to 17 of them, and you need to know all of them very well if you want to secure a job there as an SD1 or in any role, I guess. So uh, the thing with Amazon here is that um, when you write a quote, when they give you a question, then the question uh, in total is not a very difficult question. You will be able to find most of them. But the catch here is that um, most of the times they will not, you know, just uh, move to the next question. If you write a correct quote for a, a given problem statement, they'll, they'll ask you lots of uh, follow-up questions and you'll have to make changes to your code as well. Um, so after that, only when they know that uh, you know the problem, you have solved it completely and you ensure and if they know that you have uh, succeeded the follow up questions as well, then only they move to the next part. So there is so this is how Amazon makes the interview process a little tricky. So that's a brief about the coding rounds. Hmm. Understood, understood. So in a nutshell, it was basically one coding round followed by two technical interview and then the bar is around, correct? Exactly. Three interviews were there. Huh, all right. Understood. Understood. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the DSA part of it. You know, because I have heard that DSA is very difficult to Amazon rounds. Ka. So just say online assessment tha and uh, technical interviews, mein you had two two DSA problem each. So thoda, can you explain about ki kis type ka problem tha? Kya uspe apply ho raha tha? Ya fir difficulty kya thi about the DSA problem? I would say that the difficulty was not very high of those questions, but they were certainly not the exactly the standard questions that you might find on Strivers SD sheet or the various problems uh, problems that there are there on lead code or any coding platform. But the thing is that if you are able to solve most of the questions on Striver sheet, then you will be able to uh, clear those questions as well because the difficulty, as I said, is not very high. The only catch here is that they will ask you to make changes to your code. Like it could be a very small change as well. Like they might simply ask you to change the return type of your function, or they might say that we do not want to use this particular input. We want to create a new container or a new matrix. So that is the overall, you know, overall structure of the interviews. Now diving a little bit deeper on the questions, Mostly they focus on the core topics like dynamic programming, graphs, trees. Mostly I was evaluated on these as well. Uh, mostly uh, the questions were of these topics as well. 
so i think i would say that for cracking frank uh, these topics are probably the mm-hmm. most important definitely definitely like even like you said fang right even google microsoft other type of companies you need to have these three arrows in your arsenal you need to know dp you need to know graph you need to know trees unless you know these three right it's good for other companies but for fang or high level product based company ye teen topic to aapko aane hi chahiye acche se hai na that is uh, essential like if you are fang a big company then you have to make sure that all of your boxes are ticked because this is not something that you you don't get a shot at such companies every single day so you make sure you take all the boxes and there's no stone left unturned mm, correct very very well said all right so apart from uh, dsa you said there were behavioral questions in the interview was there any system design at all on the level that you applied any sort of system designing not exactly system design also uh, although i did prepare system design for these rounds because uh now these things are interview specific sometimes they will ask you system design sometimes they won't it probably depends on the interview in my case i was mostly evaluated on dsa only however in the bar raiser round i was uh, given a few behavioral questions like i mean the the very typical ones like give tell me about a time when you uh you know went above and beyond to satisfy a customer or something like that for those particular questions i had used my past work experience projects the projects that i had worked on in my previous organization so once i had answered those particular questions in that case the interviewer start probing into your questions and that's when the discussion becomes more of a technical discussion where you have to explain the tech stack that you used and what technology you used for so i would say that Amazon in in Amazon's case, they might not exactly ask you direct system design, but it's very important to have that knowledge as well because it's always a positive if you can just uh, throw in your system design knowledge while talking about your past company projects. Then it's always a good sign and it's always a green flag. Do, do you know no more things even if they're not exactly uh, if even if they're not exactly asking you that. Hmm. correct correct even if you are appearing as a fresher like you had previous work experience but even if you have made a full stack project as a side project you should know the system of it right a lot of people just know their project in code they don't know it as a system ki what are the modules you know how does it connect what are the principle you have used these sort of things like you mentioned if you know it then obviously you'll be going above and beyond what they're asking and it will turn you in a positive light so uh, definitely it is important so if you read basically what they want to evaluate is that uh, you should know what you have done i mean that's the crux of it. you have to know the technical details what people does that particular system cater to and how you created it how you designed it and how you implemented it you should know everything so that's that's the purpose of why amazon probes a lot into your answers and it's very important as well because they have to ensure that the candidate is right and he knows that whatever he has worked on he should have complete idea of that hmm correct 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 yes that's very true all right and uh, you know let's circle back to ds because this is something where a lot of people face issues and up to a common knowledge hai ki if you want to crack a company like amazon google and all so you need to be good in ds hai na ds is like the mandatory thing that you need to do and you mentioned ki thode harder topics push na it might not be exactly too hard but the topic itself you know dp tree graph people consider them hard topics right so i want to know more about your preparation of ds like how did you prepare ds at a level you know that you were able to clear the interviews yeah okay so long story short when i was uh, about to start for a start preparing for a switch the first thing is that uh, you should know what things that you have to ask that will be asked and as you said ds is probably the most important and it's very hard to look beyond dsa if you have to start preparing for interviews because system design lld wo sab chalta rahega but almost sari companies mein the first round is dsa only same in the case of amazon so after when i got to know that yes dsa is something that i have to master at this stage as well then i started looking for various resources and there's a lot of them i mostly preferred um, geeks for geeks course which is which goes by the name complete interview preparation it contains everything and that's where i started learning dsa and it's it's a great 
course for getting started with DSA and for uh, solving uh, uh, questions which are mostly asked or interviews, I focused on Strivers SD sheet. Yeah, so I focused on Strivers SD sheet for that. Um, as it contains basically, uh, it contains all the topics, and it may not contain the follow-up questions or the uh, sequel parts of the question that you are solving. But it makes sure that you touch all the topics all at once. So that was the primary thing. And now I'd like to add one more thing to it: that my preparation lasted for like uh, around six to seven months for DSA itself, for DSA only. So. Um, in this uh, in this time only one more course of uh, geeks for geeks are launched launched which goes by the name of gfg 160 and in that what uh, the thing was that in in for 160 days they would add one single question uh, based on any given data structure for a period of 160 days so i started doing that as well when i had crossed around 4 to 5 months into my preparation i started using gfg 160 as well to revise everything that I've studied so far. So I think the co a combination of these three things, Geeks for Geeks Complete Interview Preparation Course, Strivers SD Sheet, and GFG 160. I think these three were uh, completely sufficient in cracking the DSA part of the interviews. So because it's very important, you need to know what you are doing. And just simply writing the correct code does not work. They will for sure ask you to, you know, either optimize your question or ask you lots of uh, follow-up questions or probe into why you have particularly used this logic and if, if there is anything else as well that you can try here. So that's mm. for the DSA part. Mm, understood, understood. So apart from these three sources that you mentioned, you know, the GFG and the Strivers SD sheet, apart from this, like, did you do anything else for problem solving? Like, you know, contests on lead code, random problems, or anything else that you did, you know, to improve in problem solving, so to say, because a lot of people uh, do these sheets, take courses, but yet they're not able to improve in problem solving. You know, when they come across a new problem, they again get stuck. Uh, if they find a problem which they've solved, that is fine, but new problems or in contest, they get stuck. So any tips or how did you deal with that? Thanks first, I completely agree with this, that uh, you might have solved everything, but still you will never be, you will never be able to guarantee yourself that if a new problem is you, whether you'll be able to solve it or not. So I think you can only optimize yourself and maximize your chances to that you will be able to solve a new question that is thrown at you. So I think the key here is just practice, practice and practice. I couldn't, I did not focus a lot on uh, lead code uh, contests, but I, the, but you know, it's very important to challenge yourself on random questions. For that, I, uh, I use GFG 160 only because a new uh, random question gets added every single day and it was not of a very easy level. Sometimes they would be of a higher level as well. This and lead code daily problems. So I think that is also decent. That's a good solution if you want to uh, solve, uh, you know, uh, if you want to challenge yourself and learn random new things on a daily basis. Hmm. Yeah. Right, right. That's some great advice. You know, even I highly suggest key problem of the day is something that you should always do. Even if you're not doing anything, at least try to do a couple of problems of DSA a day, right? Exactly. It'll really make sure ki you stay consistent. Completely. Uh, Consistency is very, very important eh? because you have to make sure that uh, a mantra is that you do not give DSA a break of more than two days for this because in, there's a good chance that you might go off track. So consistency is super important if you're targeting any company in the world. If you want to master DSA, you have to be consistent. Even if you're doing a sing, even if you're doing one new question every single day, consistency is probably the most important thing here. All right. So we've talked about your DSA journey. We've talked about your interview experience. So you know, on a final note, to all of the people who are watching this video, let's say they also want to crack a fan company or a company like Amazon. What advice or tips would you like to give them? I would say be consistent. There's a lot of things that you need to cover to get started this or to get started with this. There is DSA, there is HLD, there is LLD. There's lots that you have to master. So I would say that it's important to be consistent, believe in yourself, and you have to know that if you work hard for a very long period of time, you will it will be fruitful for sure. It may take its uh, fair share of time, but you know, everything turns out well in the end. So that's all I would say. And consistency, I would say, is 
probably the most important things and you should know what you are doing you should have a good road map um you can also uh, follow a random person as well but only do something which suits you the most because at the end of the day it's you who's preparing for the interview and one thing for sure that you have to master everything for that you have to be consistent to ensure your chances yeah. right right you know that is a wonderful thing that you said if you keep on working hard you know consistently you're bound to succeed you know i haven't seen anyone who's working consistently for let's say a year or two year and spending all his time in you know doing the right things and still fail you'll not find a person like that right if you keep working hard definitely you're bound to succeed if you're consistent and you're dedicated right yeah totally agree all right okay so i guess that pretty much covers everything about vidant's journey to cracking amazon if any one of you still have any doubt or need to ask him something then i'll give his linkedin in the description you guys can follow him from there and connect with them from there so yeah thanks a lot vidant for coming on the channel i really hope this helps a lot of students all so yeah thank you for coming thank you so much ashish thank you so much everyone